All right, guys, so today we're going to be breaking down the Hash Altcoin Black Miner F1. As you can see, the Black Miner F1 comes in a standard ASIC housing, the ones you see ant miners come in. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to take it all apart, pop off one of the heat sinks, and take a look at the chip. Now, this will indeed kill the crab, and we're not going to be able to use that hashing board. Uh, but it's all for science because a lot of people have been asking what chip is being used on this board. So we're going to go ahead and pop it off and take a look. So you can tell what they've done is they've taken an existing ASIC. I'm not sure if they bought uh, all these second hand or if they bought them uh, purpose from the factory, whatever factory Bitmain gets them from. But it does have two slots in the top to accommodate the hashing boards. On some of the other uh, ant miners that I have, they have three or four slots to accommodate up to four hashing boards. This one only has two, so I'm not sure if they just built this after the fact or if they sort of retooled uh, ones that they got second hand but we will see later on the control board that it is indeed an L3 control board from a Bitmain amp miner. And that would explain the uh, the back end uh, for configuring your Black Miner F1 looks just like an amp miner. So pretty standard up until now. It's got one fan here on the front to push air through, and that's through those big beefy heat sinks that are sitting on top of the FPGA chips. We're just going to take off the fans, take off the grills, slide the hash boards out, take off the control board that sits on top, So as you can see here, the control board that they're using is from an L3, and that's a uh, Bitmain Antminer L3, a script miner. That would explain the back end of the Black Miner F1 looking identical, being identical to the Bitmain's back end for ASIC configuration. And I gotta say, this is pretty clever from Black Miner, just using existing overstock gray market or something like that parts that are uh, in surplus just to cut down on cost because as we all know the prices of some ASICs have gone through the floor All right, so taking a look at the board here, I couldn't give you any information on the any of the information that's printed on the PCB, but as you can see, uh, the Black Miner F1 comes with two of these boards, these hashing boards, we'll call them, each board containing six uh, large, beefy, very thick heat sinks, and these are going to be on top of the FPGA chips themselves. So what I would have liked to have done originally is have been able to dissolve or otherwise uh, safely remove the heat sink from the top of the FPGA chip, uh, although it became very apparent that they were using some kind of thermal cement or uh, adhesive glue that made it n impossible to do so. And so despite my best efforts of rocking it back and forth, trying to heat it up a little bit, uh, and unfortunately the chip did pop off the PCB, rendering this board useless. So see link in the description below if you'd like to donate for me to get a replacement Black Miner F1 if you like the uh, the effort that I put in to destroy mine so everyone could see what goodies are on the inside. But taking a look at the heat sink chip thing here, we brought the entire chip off the board and it's uh, it's really it's really glued on there with whatever thermal adhesive that they're using. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start heating it up in hopes of uh, really melting down that adhesive so I can get the chip off of the heat sink. Now you may be wondering why I didn't do this in the first place. I didn't want to direct that heat directly at the heat sink on the board uh, just in case that amount of heat going directly onto the hash board would have damaged something or otherwise rendered it useless. Now that turned out not to matter in the end because I popped the chip off and rendered the whole thing useless anyway. Taking a look here at the top of the IHS which appears to be the IHS because the, there's like a chip uh, a thermally adhesed to the, uh, the top of it we can clearly see that the chips being used are the Xilinx Kintex 7 Series and XC7K325T. A quick Google search brought me over to DigiKey where it shows that these chips are retailing for $935 a piece, which would not make any sense at all considering there are 12 of them in this $2,500 miner. So I then reached out to Hash Altcoin and to another expert FPGA witness about these chips. Um, it's uh, suspected that the ones over on DigiKey are a, uh, a higher grade, a higher tier or trim level of the Kentex 7 series, although it had the same model number, uh, that the ones being used in the black miner are just a step down. 
Additionally, my expert witness uh, gave me some uh, sort of a tease in saying that there's a um, there's a big market in China when they're manufacturing new things for aftermarket or gray market parts. That would make sense considering that this thing is in a former ant miner shell casing housing. Uh, that would make sense that if they're going to repurpose a housing that was made for a, uh, a bitmain ant miner and a control board for a bitmain ant miner, why wouldn't they use FPGA chips that were meant possibly for something else? Possibly they were overstocked. They were just, uh, they were used at some point. I don't know. Um, only hash altcoin would be able to answer that. And I'm not sure that they're going to be willing to answer something like that. And I'm not even sure that, uh, answer the answer to that question is really all that important. What is important is that this is an easy to use, easy to configure, easy to update FPGA miner that you can get up and operating on in about five minutes. I've been very supportive of the black miner F1 thus far. Uh, aside from whatever quirks and problems and uncertainty surrounds hash altcoin or the black miner F1, or that you have to get your bit streams through them, um, th the fact remains is that they've made it very easy to get started. So that's it guys, that's the teardown of the Black Miner F1 12 of these Kentec 7s inside of there running on core intensive algorithms. Uh, not sure how much onboard memory is in the Black Miner F1, so you're not probably not going to be able to hash on ethash or equihash or any of those other memory intensive algorithms, but on the core intensive stuff, you're going to be doing just great. Also, my expert FPGA witness let me know that these chips uh, on DigiKey are quite quite expensive those are the high trim level ones but you can buy these new in china for about 90 something dollars so that would make sense if you add it all up all the parts they were able to give me sort of an estimate that the black miner f1 is probably costing around 16 to 1700 dollars for them to produce and they're selling it for 2500 so not not a tremendous markup there uh, still pretty good markup and i'm not exactly sure how much uh, what's customary in terms of the markup department on uh, on mining devices but i would imagine that they would send it through the roof because of the uncertainty of uh, placing a large order for mining hardware and then something happens and no one wants it so they probably need to make up their money as much as they possibly can so anyway that's what's inside the black miner f1 let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you'd like me to tear something else down uh, if you, as long as you guys pay for it, I'm glad to tear it down. Uh, so check out links to everything we spoke about in the description below. Don't forget to check out the FPGA channel that's in our Discord. Just type discord.thetechnicals.io into your browser. It takes you straight into our Discord. Help finance future teardowns. Visit shop.thetechnicals.io. Put some of these cool shirts on your body. Otherwise, I'm The Technicals. See you next time.